Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we'll talk about hypersegmented neutrophils. What are the causes, or what's the differential diagnosis when you see hypersegmented neutrophil on the peripheral blood smear under the microscope? With that being said, now let's get started. As you know, here are your pluripotent stem cells, and then they have myeloid and lymphoid. The myeloid is giving you RBCs, granulocytes, which include neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils, or as I like to say, Ben. And then monocytes, platelets, and then lymphocytes with natural killer cells. Neutrophils are here, baby. Question, do they have granules? Oh yeah, they are granulocytes. They are the N in Ben. So yeah, they have granules. These granules are neutral. They are neither basophilic nor eosinophilic. So what is anemia? Anemia is decreased red blood cell mass. You have less of these. Okay, and depending on the MCV, mean corpuscular volume, we divide the anemias into microcytic, normocytic, and macrocytic. Macrocytic is when the MCV is greater than 100 femtoliters. Since this is the mean corpuscular volume, when the volume is high, it means that the cell is big. If you have watched my video on rheumatoid arthritis and anemia, I've talked about this in detail. In brief, when you have macrocytic anemia, every cell is big, immature, and stupid. Forgive my language. The macrocytic anemia is divided into megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic. What is the difference between the two? Many differences, including the megaloblastic anemia will have the hypersegmented neutrophils, but non-megaloblastic anemia do not have these. So what is the problem in the megaloblastic macrocytic anemia? The problem is in the DNA synthesis, usually due to B12 deficiency or folate deficiency. How about non-megaloblastic? Your liver is toast. It could be a problem in the liver itself, or you're taking medications and these medications are damaging your liver, causing non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. These ones do not have hypersegmented neutrophils. What caused the megaloblastic problem in DNA synthesis? How about the non-megaloblastic? Your problem is in the liver. Which one will have big blasts? Only the megaloblastic. That's why we call it megaloblastic, because they have blasts. What are the blasts? They are immature cells. Immature RBCs, white blood cells, or platelets. So how can we differentiate between megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic in one word? Hypersegmented neutrophils. I'm sorry, these are two words. What causes megaloblastic, usually B12 or folate? What causes non-megaloblastic? Your liver is a stupid, affecting the RBCs, making them large, looking like a freaking target called codocyte or target cell, which is big in size. After all, target is a huge superstore. But they are probably out of toilet paper right now. So here is your macrocytic anemia, megaloblastic or non-megaloblastic. The problem here is decreased DNA synthesis, and that's why you have big blasts, because you cannot synthesize DNA. And if you remember the hematopoiesis, those cells start as big, called blast, and then as they mature, they get smaller, smaller, and then smaller, you end up with a mature RBC, white blood cell, or platelet. Great! If you cannot synthesize DNA, these cells will be stuck in their immature form called blasts. And these blasts are big, that's why it's a macrocytic anemia, a megaloblastic. So the cells are big. What cells? All cell lines. You will have giant erythroblasts and large RBCs called macroovalocytes. Giant myeloblasts and giant metamyelocytes with hypersegmented neutrophils and giant hypersegmented megakaryocytes leading to giant platelets. So that's why we call it megaloblastic. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Special thanks for the 99 special people who supports me on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. And please, can we push this to 100? Like, can any one of you, just one, just one dollar, folks, so that we can get 100 supporters. Thank you so much. I'm a little OCD. So I like to round things up. That's a terrible joke, I'm sorry. Go to patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. As you see here, the cells start as big and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. This is immature, but this is mature. Same thing happens here. So when you have a problem with DNA synthesis, you'll end up with big cells 
and hypersegmented neutrophils. So what are the causes of hypersegmented neutrophils or what's the differential diagnosis of neutrophil hypersegmentation that you see on the peripheral blood smear or blood film under the microscope? Number one, hereditary neutrophil hypersegmentation. That's a hereditary disease, it's really ugly. So how would I differentiate between two patients? One of them have hereditary neutrophil hypersegmentation and the second patient has, let's say, vitamin B12 deficiency. Two things. Number one, this is a hereditary disorder, which means it runs in families. So if you took good patient history and family history, you will discover that he's not the first patient in his family to suffer from this. However, vitamin B2 deficiency is acquired. What are these acquired causes of vitamin B12 deficiency? Please let me know the answers in the comment section. There is another method how to differentiate between hereditary neutrophil hypersegmentation and vitamin B12 deficiency. How many neutrophils are hypersegmented? If you find that under the microscope more than 50% of the neutrophils are freaking hypersegmented, this is the ugly hereditary neutrophil hypersegmentation syndrome. But if less than 50% of the neutrophils are hypersegmented, go with the B12 or folate deficiency. Of course, B12 will cause neurological dysfunction, but folate will not. B12 deficiency will raise your methylmalonic acid, folate will not. However, both of them will increase your homocysteine level in the blood, hashtag homocysteinemia. This is bad, it can increase your risk of strokes, intellectual disability, joint contracture, lens subluxation, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. Another ugly inherited disease called myelocathexis. It's inherited, it has neutropenia, there is bone marrow hyperplasia of myeloid origin. Next, we have myelodysplastic syndrome, which we have talked about before in my glorious playlist on hematology, which made my channel famous. In brief, MDS is an intermediate stage between people who are normal and patients who have AML, acute myeloid leukemia. That's why there is a risk of transformation. What do you mean by transformation? I mean malignant transformation. What do you mean? I mean converting the MDS into acute myeloid leukemia. That's why if you are normal, your blasts in the peripheral smear should be less than 10%, like way less than that. If you have MDS, usually 10 to 20% blasts in the peripheral smear. If you have AML, usually more than 20% blasts in the peripheral blood smear and we have talked about all of this in my glorious playlist of hematology. You can get a free sample of my cardiac pharmacology course on my website. You can use the promo code CARDIOPHARM50 to get a 50% discount towards my cardiac pharmacology course and by the way I've decreased the original price of the course even more. This is available for the next 12 students only until the end of the month. Thank you so much for watching. Smash like, subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here. Please help me reach 100 or here. You can send me an email here. You can get my premium courses here, such as my cardiac pharmacology course. Thank you so, so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. I love you.